Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Hello and welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show. I'm really glad that you're here. I am currently recording this from Sebastopol, California, where I've been visiting my good friend Carol, who is the artist of the beautiful uh, background behind me and many of the paintings that you may have seen in my videos were painted by her. She's an amazing artist with uh, uh, just such a talent for creating nature scenes in the abstract that are just incredibly um, resonant of what really happens with the, uh, the play of light in the forest and in nature. So anyway, that's that. If you're watching, you can enjoy and if not, no worries. I'm here to talk to you today about moms because um, it seems to be a big topic this week with Mother's Day around the corner and also you know it's a topic for any time of the year because if we have moms or, or if we had moms it's uh, sometimes a struggle for us to really have the kind of relationship with our moms that we want to have or at least to make peace with the relationship that we've had in the past, it's not an easy issue, I don't think, for anyone, especially if you're an emotional eater. I find that most emotional eaters have mom issues. <laughs> so I certainly have had my share. And so, you know, I've had some good experiences and growth experiences over the years, many. I mean, it's been quite a journey. And I want to talk to you about that today because today I have an amazing experience with my mom most times. And uh, I have a, a relationship with my mom that I really appreciate and I really just love my mom. I really adore her and it wasn't always the case. So I thought I'd share a little bit of uh, why that is now, how that came to be in the, in the event that it's helpful to you and instructive for you and, and might give you some insights into how to have a, a more peaceful and harmonious and enjoyable experience with your mom. And by the way, this has to do with mom's you know, here or then, now or, now or then, uh, you know, whether alive or passed on. So, you know, we have relationships with our parents, even when they're not here. If they died many years ago, I find my father died 16 years ago. I find that, you know, he's very much a part of my life and who he was is very much a part of who I am, uh, sometimes for better, for, sometimes for worse. Um, you know, we are a product of our parents, no matter how long that relationship lasted or how good or bad it was. You know, there's, there's always good and there's always bad. And so I want to tell you my journey with my mother, which started, um, you know, out really good. My mom is, is she, you know, in the grand scheme of things was an amazing mom. She, she mothered well. She, um, always was there for us in terms of caring for us and cooking for us and making sure we got dressed and to school and um, you know my mom appreciated clothes as much as I do I probably got that from her and so we always had good clothes to wear and we went shopping every um, fall for new clothes for the season so I mean we had the means to do that so that was part of my mom's mothering and so there's many things that were wonderful about her in my childhood, uh, there were not so wonderful things as well. Uh, you know, I'm the uh, youngest of three girls and I think we all did absorb maybe some habits from my mom. She had some eating issues. Uh, she'd been overweight and so both my parents had been and then they got thinner as life, you know, as they got older. Um, but uh, I think my mom's own relationship with food impacted my own relation, you know, my relationship with food. And she, I believe, perceived that I was probably an eater, uh, an out of control eater, probably from an early age, which I was. And so she made a lot of effort to try to control what I ate and push my stomach in with her hand when I had it hanging out, which I had a lot of resentment about for many years. And she would eyeball me when I was reaching for the butter to go with my bread or the dressing to go on my salad because those were things I loved to heap on and eat in excess. And so even though she made cookies, she was pretty healthy. So she made uh, more cookies on the more health 
full side. And so there were like oatmeal and raisin cookies. Uh, but she did, she did make chocolate chip cookies, but they always had oatmeal in them. And, and, um, uh, which now I would not turn my nose up at, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, she, uh, was sort of healthy. And so, uh, before her time, you know, this is back in the seventies and, um, had, she was very health conscious, which I'm grateful for now. But at the time it was like, oh, mom, you know, can't we have any better food here? And I'd always go to my friend Molly's house and they had Rice Krispie treats and they had, uh, all kinds of snacks that were really yummy that we didn't have in our house. And then I went to Carol's house, the girl, uh, the, the now woman who painted these wonderful paintings, she, um, I grew up with her since I was two. And so at her house, I'd get to eat peanut butter and, and fluff and utter sandwiches and chocolate milkshakes and Dorothy's house. We had great milkshakes and ice cream and just, I was always looking for the goodies. Let's, let's put it that way. As an emotional eater, I was not interested in health food. I wanted the, the ooey gooey chewy foods and I found them more frequently at my friends' houses. So um, I definitely was over there quite a lot. <laughs> you know, I mean, as a little food addict, a budding sugar addict, I knew how to get my sugar and I did. But I do digress here. Um, anyway, my mom was very controlling of my weight and, and what I ate. And, and I believe now in an effort to help me uh, but at the time, I didn't see it that way. It was an impediment for me. It was annoying. Uh, I really hated her for it. You know, I got sneaky, tried to hide food and uh, make sure I got what I had to have. And it's not that she didn't, that she denied me things. I mean, she would make brownies or uh, she'd do, you know, make all kinds of yummy things. But, uh, you know, most people would eat one but I wasn't one of those people. So I would always eat more than one. So she had to kind of felt the need to try to curb how much I ate. So, you know, as an emotional eater, that was, that didn't sit well with me. <laughs> so I needed my food. So there was always that tension between us and a resentment on my part. Uh, she also, I think, was embarrassed about me and the way I looked because I was pudgy and sometimes did let my stomach hang out. And I had these rolls on my stomach, which I've talked about before. And so uh, she, uh, you know, I think was sort of embarrassed that her daughter didn't look the way she wanted me to look. And of course I resented that. And, um, even though I, I cared about how I looked a lot, I couldn't control my weight. And so I couldn't control that I was fat. And so she, I don't believe she ever shamed me. She wasn't like a harsh, critical mom at all. But it comes through, you know, if they're embarrassed or they, you know, the little comments here and there do you know, they come through and I feel the vibe. So I resented her for that. And again, looking back, I mean, this is jillions of years later, I appreciate the the fix she must have been in. Uh, having a daughter was out of control. And in fact, she had a couple of them. I mean, my oldest sister and I were both out of control eaters and, and my other sister got really fat. And so she would bribe her. She took her to Weight Watchers. I mean, all kinds of things that I witnessed that I didn't have to go through. Although my mom did at one time want to buy me Chubat. There was a clothing line called Chubats. Can you imagine how horrifying that is? But anyway, <laughs> I said, Mom, I'm not buying Chubats. I'm not buying, I'm not wearing a single piece of clothing that has Chubats as the tag. So obviously these are kind of the struggles we had. But the point is, I understand now how hard it must have been for her to have these daughters who are out of control with their food. But, you know, my parents didn't know what to do about it. And, um, and they really, uh, my dad, I think was embarrassed about definitely my oldest sister. He was really harsh with her. Um, you know, he used to call her DC Greaves. My maiden name is, maiden name is Greaves. So he used to call her DC Greaves for double chin Greaves. I mean, my, my oldest sister got the brunt of it, um, of his shame. So, you know, you might have experienced some of these things growing up. You might have experienced some shame of your own and then maybe some others displaced shame. And that hurts a ton. It hurts a ton. And it's not easy to um, withstand. And so that's that's how it was. Um, again, I did get spared. My, my oldest sister, I, I feel bad for her. She got the brunt of it. Um, you know, my dad 
really, uh, we had a good relationship much better than, than he had with my oldest sister. So he overlooked a lot of things. I don't think he ever, it was, it was until I was way into my adulthood that he saw a picture of me where I was really, really poly. And he's like, wow, I didn't realize you were that big. And, and I'm like, I can't believe you didn't know that. But, you know, I was spared his own shame because I, you know, I think the nature of our relationship was he didn't notice. He, he saw the other qualities in me for which I'm grateful. But anyway, um, getting a lot of my history here. My point with my mom is that, you know, we had strains and struggles and my mom was also kind of a la di da woman. Like she, um, was a stay at home mom. And so she had a lot of, uh, you know, she was on the board of some different, like her, her school. Um, at, at one point she was part of a, the garden club I and mean, she did a lot of la di da type things, played tennis. And, um, and so I, 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 I had my own shame around that and my own judgment of her not working and always wish she had a job, you know, a regular job, not just a mom job. So, um, you know, again, it, it, it plays both ways. And I was, I, I could be harsh towards her, at least in my mind. And so, The point of all this is that we all have stuff with our parents and with our moms. And um, I know certainly that I had it good. I mean, my mom was a, she wasn't an addict. You know, she wasn't harsh. She wasn't, she didn't beat me. She didn't say mean things about me or to me. So I had a really charmed childhood. Nevertheless, I had my struggles. And so, and I think everybody does. And no matter how good you might've had it, there, if you're an emotional eater, you had stuff that affected you that needs to be worked through. And if you didn't have it good, if you had a harsh, abusive childhood, uh, first of all, I'm sorry. And second of all, you can work through that to where it doesn't impact your life anymore and cause you to um, bury your pain with food. And it, that's ha- that has to happen. I mean, if you're listening to this now, it's time to you know work through that stuff and move forward. And I have a course that will help you do that. I'm just going to put a little plug in for that right now. I'm going to tell you that the seven simple steps to end emotional eating now is a course that uh, people are enrolling for. And I'll put a link to that in this show. And I hope you join me on that journey because you will face and heal the things inside of you that are buried from your childhood because that's part of the uh, seven simple steps. And it's a lot simpler than you might think. So, uh, you know, come with me on that journey. But uh, anyway, the point is, uh, you know, I had to work through that stuff. And uh, Roy was my mentor and he showed me how to do that. And it it pays off really big. And I encourage you to take that journey uh, because it's time to have a good relationship with our parents. It's time. It's not too late. You know, I, I waited too long with my dad and he died. And I wish I had done more work by the time, you know, before he died so that I could be, have been more healed and been more compassionate toward him. I had my own issues with him. And so please, I urge you uh, to take this journey, um, whether it be with me or, or in some other way, it's time to heal. And so what's happened for me, I'll fast forward the 30 years it's been and tell you that there's two things that make my relationship with my mom awesome. Okay. And these are things you can apply to your own relationships. The first is absolute complete acceptance of my mother. My mother is 80 and she is awesome. She's very vibrant. She skis and hikes and bikes and does all kinds of things, travels. Um, So I'm grateful for that. But she um, is, uh, has certain things about her, certain quirks that I don't like, that aggravate me, that frustrate me, that make me want to scream at her when I'm with her. And and I nowadays don't do any of those things. You know, I accept that that's what, the way my mom is and she will always be the way she is. I'm, and I'm not expecting her to change. And what that does is it frees me up to just enjoy her and all the good things about her. And it helps me overlook the things that I wish were different, which don't really make a whole lot of difference anyway. They're not big deals. But anyway... Uh, that's the first thing is I accept my mom and I find a lot of people don't have peace with their parents because they're still trying to change them and they're still judging them for the way they are and expecting them to change. Trying, they're trying to make them change, get them to change. 
And I'm telling you, it's not going to happen, you know, unless they have the incentive we have. I mean, we have an incentive to overcome emotional eating. That's what drives my need to change is I need to have peace in my heart and in my mind. And so I have to change in order to be free from emotional eating. Not my mom. She's pretty good. I mean, it's what, whatever she's doing is working for her. And who, you know, who am I to say she should be different for my sake? Nope. It's not, that's not going to motivate her to change. Um, so it's really important that I accept her the way she is. And when I do, I got no problems. You know, I, I don't, I don't have any beef with her and it's great. It's just, I can enjoy her and all the good things about her. And I do. The second thing is that I don't try to get anything from my mother. I do not try to get anything from her. And by anything, I, I especially mean love and acceptance from her. Now, my mom does love me and accept me. But what I've observed is that over the years, you know, I, I got my emotional support from other people, from Roy, from my community. Um, you know, you can get it from the Heal Your Hunger community, you know, that we have uh, based on the course that I, that I have, Seven Simple Steps. Um, don't mean to plug that. I just can't help it because it's a resource that can help you. And I want to mention it. But the point is, I had to get, create a community of people who would love and accept me so that I wasn't always trying to get that from my family. And, uh, and it's, it takes a lot of pressure off when I'm with them to, you know, to just enjoy. It helps me enjoy them instead of wishing they would accept me and love me and, and understand me. All these things, acceptance, love, validation, understanding. When we have that hole in our soul and we want that, we, we expect our family to fill that for us and to give us what we never got as children. If we didn't get it then, we're not going to get it now. You know, if, and if we do get it, it's a bonus. But if we're expecting it, it's going to create tension in our relationship. And this is what I really want to stress to you is that let it go. Like get it elsewhere. Find people with whom you can relate, who are loving and caring, who do understand you, who are aligned in their goals and aspirations and uh, quirks and whatever it is. You know, other emotional eaters, preferably, so that you get real understanding. You know, find that so that you can then let your family off the hook for giving it to you. Because they will not give it to us the way we want it. I promise you. They just won't. And when we're wanting it from them and we're not getting it the way we want it, we're resentful, we're angry, we're frustrated, we're, you know, bickering, we're petty, we're picking, you know, fights about things that don't make a hill of beans. And we're doing it because underneath we have this deeper longing that, you know, something that we want from them. And I'm telling you, let that go. It's time. Whatever age you are right now, it's time. Trust me, it's, it's past time. You know, it's time for you to let your family off the hook. Let your mom off the hook. My goodness. Enjoy the rest of the years you have with her. She's not going to change. All those quirky, weird, frustrating, annoying things about her, not going to change not going to change. No incentive to change. You got to change. And that means you need to say, Hey, that's the way my mom is. I'm going to accept her for what she is and love her anyway and appreciate the things that are wonderful about her. And then, you know, definitely stop trying to get, when we get, we're, we're being selfish and we're looking to take from somebody and, and we're never going to get it the way we want it. And when we have the energy of taking, you know, we, we block ourselves off from the opportunity to give which means we're being children. We're being uh, adult children, like give me, give me, give me, just like we were as kids. And it's time to grow up. I mean, our lack of growth and being an adult is what's fueling our emotional eating. We're like in a constant temper tantrum. <laughs> we're not getting it our way. But you can stop right now trying to get it and say, hey, look, I'm going to get my emotional support from someone else. For years, I didn't even talk to my mother about my personal life. I didn't even bother. You know, I talked to Roy about it. I talked to friends about it. You know, people I knew I, who were safe that I could talk to. I did not reveal anything to my family for many years on my recovery path because I just get pissed off. I'd, I'd hate the advice they gave me. I hate the judge, I'd hate the judgments I got from them. I mean, and there were a lot. And, and my family's, you know, fairly accepting and loving. And still there were judgments or I felt judged. Might not have even ha been happening, but... I felt that way because when you're, you know, when it's family, it's entangled and it's gnarly and we've got all these emotions that we've hidden and buried. So I just didn't even talk to my family about my personal life. 
And that allowed me to just learn about them, get to know them. If it made me feel protected, there I wasn't, wasn't laying myself open. But I see so many people, you know, again, trying to get validation and understanding by talking about their personal life. And I'm not saying don't go to your family if, if they can be helpful to you and you need the support. Uh, don't live it alone, you know, in isolation. But you got to get the support from somewhere and preferably from people who are not entangled with you emotionally, who can be understanding, who can be um, objective. You know, so much of the time the advice I would get from my mom was fearful. I mean, it was like, oh, don't do that. Are you sure you can do that? You know, my mom was very rules oriented. And are you sure you can do that? You should check with somebody first. Or have you got approval for that? Or, oh, they're going to be mad. You know, all this feedback that was based on fear, her fear. And trust me, I did not need her fear. I had enough on my own. So when I was trying to build a life and, and step out in faith and, and be self-confident, the minute I talked to her about things, I just felt shot down. And she didn't mean to be. She thought she was helping me. But the fear, the barrage of fear was just overwhelming to me and I didn't want it. So I didn't talk to her about my personal life. Again, I didn't try to get her to change and not give me fearful feedback. That's kind of what I got from her. And unbeknownst to her, she didn't even know it. But I, I had to stop trying to get her to change so that I was more comfortable in the relationship. You know, I went elsewhere for that emotional support. And all that did is it allowed me to then just be there for her. And, and I do talk to my mom now. She's chilled out a lot. She's not so fearful. Um, she's a lot more accepting and, and non-reactionary. So she's I think having three children who have been on their own recovery path has helped her change. You know, it's sort of, it just happened, you know, as people in the dance have different roles in the dance, everybody's role changes. Uh, but still, it wasn't by trying to get her to change because I knew that wasn't going to work. And it, and it's, it's just worked out that she has changed and, and we've, our roles have changed. But, you know, now I just concentrate on giving to my mom. I love to give to my mom. My mom has given me a lot. I'm super grateful to her and for her. My dad died 16 years ago, so I don't have, you know, I can't make amends with him in a very direct way. And part of my amends to him and the kind of brat I was around him and resenting him, I can make uh, through my mom, which I know would please him and maybe wherever he may be. So, um, so I just pour a lot of love into my mom and try to make her life better. And, you know, when I'm with her, I pamper her a bit and she loves that and um, and I'm just trying to give back when I give when I focus on giving it sort of protects me it gives it puts a shield around me where I don't get resentful for not getting the way I want to get and it and you'll, you should try it it's it's amazing like when you just go to your family's you know events or hang out with one of your family members especially your mom uh, you know and you just think, you know, and you tell her, what can I do, mom? Can I get you something to drink? You know, what do you need to be more comfortable? Or, you know, I don't mean being annoyingly fawning, but, but just think about how you can be helpful to her. Listen to her stories, pay attention to her stories, ask her questions about her life, learn about her life. Uh, when you do that, um, you know, you will protect yourself from, you know, thinking about what you're not getting or what you want. And that just outward, you know, generosity will help you feel better about yourself and protect you from the resentment. Um, and then you'll just have a more enjoyable time. Your mom will be happy. She'll feel cared for. I mean, so much of the time we just think they're our mom. They're supposed to give to us. But, you know, when you get into your 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, that, you know, that dog's not going to hunt. <laughs> like you need to have it be more equal and think about giving back. And that's helped me tremendously. And I just want to say, I know you may have a relationship with your mom that is really tough. And I know your mom may be a handful to deal with, whether it be mental illness or alcoholism or pill addiction or raging, or, or maybe she's passed on, you know, or some of this stuff doesn't seem to apply. Uh, even the way you're thinking about her if she's passed on, uh, starting to dwell more on the things that were good about her can change your relationship with her forever. So I hope these tips have helped. Uh, you know, you can have a new relationship with your parents now, right now. Uh, just practice these two things. One is accepting them exactly as the way they are. You know, just 
understanding that your mom is the way she is and you're not going to change her. And two, think about giving. Think about giving instead of getting so that you can uh, be outward focused instead of inward focused. You know, selfless instead of selfish. And, um, and that will protect you. That will actually help you have a better experience. And you'll, and, and you'll come to love your mom and appreciate her. And even if you have to write a gratitude list and just, you know, try to, you know, remember the things that are good about her when it's sometimes hard to remember uh, and to focus on that, that's going to make a big difference for you. So I hope this has helped. It certainly helped me. It's transformed my relationship with my mom. Uh, if you want to go through this wonderful process of transformation where you can end emotional eating now, I invite you to uh, register for the, for the seven simple steps to end emotional eating now. And that you, the link is healyourhunger.com forward slash seven written out the word seven. So if you want to check out the course, it's healyourhunger.com forward slash seven. And I'll put, uh, I'll put it in the show notes as well. So hope this helps. Thanks so much for being here for another episode of Heal Your Hunger. Please make a comment on the Facebook page and stay in touch. If you have any questions, you can email me at questions at healyourhunger.com. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be with you. You take it easy. If you enjoyed this show and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit healyourhunger.com.